it is scary that people we love could die from this. We can't avoid that. That's a reality. Hey everybody, Stuart here for the future. Now, most of you probably haven't seen me in front of the camera and that's because I'm usually behind it, either shooting or editing. But this COVID-19 situation that the entire world is going through has, let's say, forced us to improvise a little bit. So today I'm here to introduce a clip from a live stream that Chris did with therapist Wesley Little. Now, in this clip, Wesley talks about how to identify anxious thoughts and feelings and how to cope with those. If you're like me, the last couple of weeks have brought on a lot of anxious thoughts and feelings. So while you're watching this, I hope that you get a lot of wisdom and a lot of comfort, just like I did. What I'm seeing, and I'm even seeing this in a, on a personal level with my family, how everybody's processing what's going on in the world right now. And there's a lot of misinformation that's out there in, in terms of how to deal with coronavirus. Should we be going out and uh, at all? Should we be locked down? Should we all be wearing masks and, and using hand sanitizer? And I'm seeing two polar extremes here. I'm seeing on one hand, people are really underreacting, going to pubs and hanging out and thinking they're invincible. And then people that are overreacting, we see this in clips of people sharing the hoarding that's happening. So what's going on? How can we process this? And it's a complicated time right now. Yeah, I think what you're seeing, Chris, with the under and overreaction is, is exactly what we do as humans when we are confronted with really intense, difficult emotions to cope with. So you could see this in a micro level in a couple, right? You could see one person who's saying, you know, we've got problems, this is bad, we've got to do something about it. We might have the other partner who's like, we have barely any problems, it's fine, don't worry about it. Right now we're just seeing it on a societal level. Mm -hmm. So this is what we do when the emotion is too intense inside of us, we're either gonna suppress it and avoid anything that is kind of like a bad thought or a bad feeling. These are people who are going out and saying like, I'm not worried about this at all. Right. Or we're going to get so anxious and so fearful that we start going into that scarcity fear where we're hoarding to kind of help ourselves feel more stable and more safe. Is it, is it just, that's what we do because we're looking for some kind of control? Yeah. I mean, one of the hardest things to tolerate as a human being is the uncertainty yeah. that we live in. And to some extent, we all have to live in a little bit of denial that bad things happen because we have to get in a car and drive to work and we have children and we you know, have to do a lot of things that we know logically have inherent risk or loss associated with them, but we have to function. So we kind of compartmentalize that fear. And it's scary when we're actually confronted with uncertainty and risk and loss. You know, our, our system is saying, wait a minute, you know, I can't, I can't just compartmentalize this anymore. And so it is, it's, we want to control it. We want it to not feel uncertain anymore. So if I'm feeling what you're talking about, how do I begin to process so I can be functional? There's kind of two camps with this. With one camp, if, if I would say you have about a typical amount of anxiety in your system, right? So everyone has anxiety to some degree. So if you have about a typical amount of anxiety, you know, the work is to really just notice what the feelings are that you have and try not to just react out of them. I mean, you're still supposed to listen to the guidelines, listen to the CDC guidelines. We're supposed to, to listen to experts who are telling us like these are good safety measures right now, right? So we listen to the information. And then if the anxiety is coming up and kind of panicking us and saying, I, I wanna do more than that, or I wanna you know, figure out something else, I think that's where if we can just sit with like, it is scary. It is scary that people we love could die from this. We can't avoid that. That's a reality. And so we just sit with the reality of it, which is very difficult. I'm, I'm not saying it like that's an easy thing, but, but that's the path is to sit with, sit with the actual fear and the reality. Is that, is that bad news? 
no, it's not. But then, okay, so I'm feeling this, and what do mm-hmm. I do? And now, I've mm-hmm. I've heard before, like when when you are scared or you're anxious and you're panicking, uh, amounts of cortisol get released into your system, and that actually does havoc to your own body. So when you say mm-hmm. live with your fear and feel it, aren't I doing more harm to myself? Yes, I mean I I understand what you're what you're saying, but usually we're not sitting with the core emotion, like if we're sitting with real fear and we're saying, okay, like this is scary, this is a scary possibility and I can feel it. Like I can feel my heart catch. I can feel, Mm. you know, that feeling in my chest when I think it's scary to think that my parents who are 60 and 80 are more vulnerable to this. Right. 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 That's a scary thought. Mm -hmm. And I can feel that. And if I didn't stay with that feeling, if I wanted to kind of exit out of that feeling, you can actually make yourself more anxious where really? you're like, I, I can't tolerate that. Right. So if I were like, I can't tolerate that bad things can happen. I simply can't tolerate it. Then the system kind of hits a gas pedal with anxiety. And that's when like, for me, my system's going to orient more towards doing. So it's going to be like, I've got to call them every five minutes and I've got to do I this see. and I've got to do that. But if I just stayed with the core emotion, it's just fear of losing people I love. And then if I stay with that, it's not comfortable. I don't want people listening to think like, oh, it's just easy. It's going to feel fine. It isn't. It feels uncomfortable to confront losing people we love. And so that's part of it is though it's not a hectic emotion inside. It's more of like a sad emotion. Okay, so you feel that, and then what do you do with that? So I feel that, and I acknowledge that this is part of being human, and it's a really, really painful part of being human. It's a painful part of being human to love people as much as we love them and to also know that we could lose them. I think it comes to the core of what's difficult about being a person. You, you were talking before about how you process your emotions and, and you're essentially telling yourself a story about what's happening, right? So mm-hmm. you can either live in that minute or moment and that feeling and then process mm-hmm. it and understand what's going on. You can try to push through it really fast, like you were saying, but that's actually going to do you more harm because you start to go into action mode and you do all kinds of things to wind yourself up and you may, you may worsen the anxiety in your mind. But the way I look at it, it's like there's emotion and there's logic and Whenever we're processing something, I think what we're doing is we're telling ourselves a story. And it's a story that we crafted pretty much out of nothing. It's out of thin air because most of what we do, and I believe this, it's not actually based on objective truth or fact. It's actually just based on feelings and opinions. So if I just tell myself a different story, you call that coping. That's, I would not use that to just to, I would not use the word coping as Mm -hmm. as just more like a life philosophy, but maybe that's just me recoding that word. Well, okay. Give me an example. So like with, if you find yourself getting anxious about the times we're living in right now, what would be, what would be the anxious story? And then what would be the story you change it to? When I'm working on a deck and I have a presentation, a talk I have to give in say a week or so, the story I could tell myself is, oh my God, you got to get this thing done. And why why do you, why is it only a week left? And that's when the anxiety starts to kick in. Like it's not going to be good or you don't know what you're talking about. So that's a story that I'm telling myself. And the story that I I change it to is like, we've been here before. We've done many talks and a week is is actually a lot of time because I've put together decks on the airplane. You know, so I lean into the fact that the past has taught me that I can get through this and just to to buckle down and get the work done and it'll be okay. Everything's going to work out just fine. Yeah, so... I think that's a great way to work with that emotion, right? It's it's kind of a self-soothing where you're saying like, it'll be okay. I don't have to believe the reality of this is bad. I can choose the reality of this is going to be good and this is going to be fine. So you're, you're switching that narrative, right? Yes. Yeah. And so that that's absolutely normal and fine. Um, it, I, if we don't call it a coping, I could say it's a way that we simply process our emotions or live with our emotions. Is that a better way to put it? Sure, I guess. But I mean, I could live with the word coping. I just never saw it like that. That's all. 
I kind of think of it as there's a there's an uncomfortable feeling inside and you're noticing like, oh, I'm linking it to an unhelpful narrative. Right. Yes. But it's an uncomfortable feeling. Yes, it is. So you're saying to change the discomfort, I link it to a positive narrative. Yes. Yeah. I think if if you are self-aware enough that you can pause and say, oh, I'm having I'm having a lot of uncomfortable anxiety. You're already way ahead of the game, because for a lot of people that that train has left the station without them even realizing like, oh, I'm feeling anxious. Yeah. And so part of, you know, as people are trying to balance out right now, how much how much is kind of an appropriate anxiety response and how much is an over anxiety response or an under anxiety response? A really great first step is to try to check in with like, is my heart racing faster than normal? Am I much more distracted than I typically am? Am I doing something that's a little bit out of character? So it's just tracking like, am I even feeling more anxious? Is that what you're doing? Is that your process? Yeah, I just try to tap into like I, I've noticed today um, and yesterday I'm my attention span is much shorter. So I'm like flipping between Instagram and TikTok and email and like doing all this stuff, which is not my normal MO. Mm-hmm. And so I'm noticing like, oh, I'm my body wants to do something like I'm, I'm having a buildup of adrenaline and my body wants me to do something. And so I'm I'm flipping between a lot of stuff right now. Okay, so now that you're aware of that, what do you do with that? For me, I try to exercise because it's a really good, healthy way to give my body what it wants, which is action. And then if I can't or I've already exercised that day, then I'll sit down and try to take deep breaths and meditate and just just kind of have some self-compassion that, of course, it's normal that my body wants to do a lot of stuff right now. So you describe something that I felt, too, and I, I process a little bit differently. Sometimes I sit at my desktop and I feel like I'm bouncing between a thousand different activities, between updating a thumbnail, answering questions online, checking social media, responding to somebody's urgent emails, scheduling something with somebody for a podcast, and also working on my deck. I get wound up and the, the, the feeling that I describe to people is it feels like uh, like a rubber band or a ball of rubber bands that's just being twisted and knotted together and my nerves and everything gets really tight. I could even feel it in my hands. Mm-hmm. And the way that I just remedy that is I also just say to myself, what are three things you just need to do right now and prioritize that list? And then in that way, I become my own boss and say, look, mm-hmm. okay, the most important thing we have to do today is is read the contract, which I hate to do, and either mark it up or sign it and be done with that. And then here's number two, number three. And that allows me to very quickly quiet the noise and the, the bouncing between different activities and actually spinning myself out of control and then just hunkering down and saying, boom, one, two, three. And then I don't think about anything else. That's great, too, because you're focusing in and you're saying you did the first step, right? Which is, oh, I notice I'm getting wound up. Yep. Right. Which is the same thing that I'm trying to do. So that first step of self-awareness is so key. So I notice I'm in an unhelpful mode or a different mode than I usually am. And then your way of of processing that is to say, I need to not keep scattering my energy around, but to focus my energy into the priorities. So did you enjoy that conversation between Chris and Wesley? If you did, you can watch the entire live stream on our channel. In the meantime, future family, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you.